analysis journal. Um, author is Stephen M. Kahn, and it's called Cacodemony. Yeah. And this only reads page 69 from every journal. That is accurate, Frank. He skips immediately to it. And as always, uh, we're going to read this. I don't know what this is. And uh, let me know. So. Now, there we go. All right. So, yeah. Well, here we go. Grice without an audience. Schiffer. Am I missing something here? What is this? Schiffer. This seems the right result. The lieutenant did not intend... Oh, this is weird. It's like, I wonder if this is like... Feel, looks like it got cut a page, but who knows. Um, Scroll down. Okay. Oh, that's right. Old analysis things do not uh, start on the beginning. Ha ha ha. It starts mid-page. But I'm correct that doing things solely for its attached virtue is pointless. Also, I need more smally daily pleasures. And see, this is the thing. Like, if you're going to talk about motivation and like what actually gets us going... The virtues ain't it. And this is one of the problems I guess I have with Aristotle and the virtue talk is that if you are talking about these big like theoretical ideas, it's not the on the ground stuff is a problem. And this is one of the reasons uh, I'm more of a cynic and less of a like virtue ethicist is because why, what's the motivation in cynicism? You are motivated um, by things like this is stupid or someone's doing something dumb it's much more of a grounded like it's not like a good thing but it's like well what did uh diogenes say to alexander says get out of my light you're you're irritating me like something like that it's like you're it's much more of an inter uh interactive i guess you could say thing so it's like what's the motivation there's interactive stuff and i'm sure like aristotle has a theory about this because aristotle talked about most things but like it's more basic it's like what do you it, you're applying like uh your personality in the interactive stuff and that's why i like that sort of stuff more than just these abstract thoughts about oh yeah i'm like working on my virtue of blah 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 that doesn't like have any you don't know where you're going you don't know what you're talking about if you do that sort of thing okay yeah so here we go as always, feel free to ask questions along the way. My first time reading it too. Um, I've got both Kick and uh, Twitch going at the moment, so we may have chat from multiple sources. And uh, yeah, here we go. Caco Demony by Stephen M. Kahn. For many centuries, philosophers have grappled with what has come to be known as the problem of evil. Succinctly stated, the problem is, could a world containing evil have been created by an omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent being? I actually read the uh, SCP article on this a while ago, and they called it the uh, underachiever problem because it's like one of these things. If you have a god that like fails to make a perfect world, then are they just kind of an underachieving god? They're not really all, all like all powerful, all knowing, or all good. Yeah. So this is the result of the problem of evil is called the underachieve underachiever problem. Okay. Considering the vast literature devoted to this issue, it is perhaps surprising that there has been little or no discussion of an analogous issue which might appropriately be referred to as the problem of goodness. Uh, oh, it's a doom related thing called the, like the caco demon. Oh, I wonder if that's it. Like, yeah, there's a or did doom the game doom steal it from uh, someplace else. But yeah, maybe it is like there was a doom thing. You know what? I don't know, like, because this is 1977, so it would have to be pre the Doom game. <laughs> so Caco Demon might be something from someplace else. I don't know. Okay, so this is the problem of goodness. S succinctly stated, the problem is: could a world containing goodness have been created by an omnipotent, omniscient, omnimalevolent being? Okay, so we've got an omnimalevolent. So this is the opposite. So if you have a evil, if you're world is made by an evil uh, demon um that's a god is a former gifted kid yeah and that's why it's, it rang a bell yeah because it was it was given in the game doom i guess so this is the thing could a demon make a good world say like by mistake this paper has two aims. The first is to provide a reasonable solution to the problem of goodness. Traditional theists, of course, find the hypothesis of creation by a benevolent deity far more plausible than the hypothesis of creation by a malevolent demon, and they may therefore believe the problem of goodness to be irrelevant to their commitments. My second aim is to demonstrate that this belief is mistaken. One was a D&D. &D. 
I expect it was actually after 1977, because, I mean, but I don't know. I'm not a D&D &D person. So, yeah. Thank you for posting the link. Let's see. Copy link. Let's go see real fast. What do we got going here? A Doom Wiki. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's this guy. Yeah, from... Wow. Okay, so Kako Daemon was evil spirit. Okay, so this is the history here. So maybe that's what it is. This uh, author is just using Kako Demon as like, you know, evil genie or bad spirit or whatever. But that Okay, so that's cool. Thank you, Anne. So it's from the Greek. Okay. This is a fun setup. So this is flipping the argument, the traditional argument on the on its head, um, where you're basically saying, look, could a omni like could God make a world with evil versus uh, now you're asking could the devil make a world with good? Okay. Before proceeding, it would be well to restate the problem of goodness in a more formal fashion. One. Assume that there exists an omnipotent, omniscient, omni-malevolent demon who created the world. So yeah, you've got the devil. Two, if the demon exists, then there would be no goodness in the world. Three, but there is goodness in the world. Four, therefore, the demon does not exist. Since the conclusion of the argument follows from the premises, those who wish to deny the conclusion must deny one of the premises. No demonist, the analog to a theist, would question premise one in order to avoid the conclusion of the argument, an attack would have to be launched against either premise two or premise three. Yeah, so you're saying, let's assume the devil exists and then go from there. What if a demonist attempted to deny premise three? Suppose it were claimed that goodness is an illusion, that there is nothing of this sort in the world. Would this move solve the problem? I think not, for such a claim is either patentedly false or else involves a distortion of the usual meaning of the term good. If the word is being used in its ordinary sense, then acts of kindness, expressions of love, and creations of beauty are good. But since obviously such good such things do occur, there is goodness in the world. Yeah, so this is the old, well, look, maybe it's our misunderstanding of God's grand plan, and that's why we don't understand what suffering is, and like it, it's not actually suffering. Okay, Shakespeare used the word? Okay. There we go. So we at least have, uh, if it's from the Greek and it's already in English from Shakespeare, then it's been around. Okay, so this is the thing. Um, I keep saying that. In any case. <laughs> we, we expect that our understanding of suffering and evil is what we think it is. And for like a theologian to say, well, we just don't understand. It's all God's plan. It's like, no, why would we be suffering then? So, yeah. Okay, if one is, insists that such things are not good, then the expression good is being used eccentrically, and the claim loses its import. It is though one were to defend the view that all men are pigs by defining men as omnivorous hoofed mammals of the family Swedae. Such men are no men at all, and similarly, a supposed omni-malevolent demon who cherishes personal affection and great works of art is certainly not omni-malevolent and is probably no demon. Yeah, so why would there be great works of beauty in a entirely evil world premise three can thus be adequately defended and if the demonist is to find an answer to the problem problem of goodness he must attack premise two but how can there be goodness in the world if the creator is omni malevolent and possesses the power and the knowledge to carry out his evil intentions to paraphrase epicurus is the demon willing to prevent good but not able then he is omnipotent is he able but not willing? Then he is benevolent. If he is both willing, able and willing, whence then is goodness? At this point, it may appear to be a hopeless task to justify the demon's malevolence in the face of the fact that goodness and enterprise... Wait, in the face of the fact of goodness and enterprise appropriately referred to as cacodemony, the, the analog of theodicy. Okay, so this is like, as opposed to like the theodicy, how the world is. But a sophisticated demonist would realize that there is much play left in his position. He would not agree that just because there is goodness in the world, it could not have been created by the omni-malevolent demon. After all, isn't it possible that whatever goodness exists, in lo exists is logically necessary for this to be the most evil 
world that the demon could have created. Not even an omnipotent being can contravene the laws of logic, for such a task is senseless, and so if each and every good in the world were logically tied to the achievement of the greatest evil, the omnimalevolent demon, in order to bring about the greatest possible evil, would have been forced to allow the existence of these goods. Yeah, so now we're saying the demon can't contravene the laws of logic and logic necessitates some good even if everything else is evil now that's hard but like maybe because you're saying all right the demon is all powerful but not so powerful to contravene logic so if they're going to make a world with logic in it then they are limiting then this is the greatest evil world that allows for you know people in it because we need logic Okay, the demonist thus rejects premise two, the argument, and argues instead for uh, premise two prime. Two prime, if the demon exists, then every good in the world is logically necessary in order for this to be the most evil world that the demon could have created. Frank says, we are going to operate as though the demon can't contravene logic because if it can, then this conversation doesn't mean anything. Yeah, so this is the thing. If you are going to say you need a world of some sort of structure, then the structure is that logic. But that means they had to create a world with structure and goodness is tied into that structure. So then it's the greatest possible world of the uh, greatest, most evil world with the understanding that worlds require certain constraints. So the, the, ev uh, the evil demon could have made all pure evil, but then it couldn't have made a world because then it doesn't make sense. So there's still some sort of a requirement here of uh, lacking omnipotence, though. Ivan says the demon has to allow good so we, we can have our hopes dashed. Maybe, but wouldn't there be a greater evil than just dashing hopes? Like, yes, like if you need all kinds of evil, maybe. But then uh, I would just say, isn't there a worse evil than like dashing people's hopes? I don't know. Ivan says, and we have the free will to do good because we need the free will to do evil. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe that's how theology works, where you have to have free will to do evil. But again, why do we have to do evil? Can't we just be constantly suffering? I don't know. Harris says, an eternity of butthole spiders would be horrible, even without breaks. This is the thing. It's like, but again, maybe uh, we have a point here from like Ivan and Frank, where there's a ranking of evils or something. And uh, maybe the an eternity of butthole spiders just doesn't rank that high. Like, even though there's like evil, it's evil. Maybe you can have a much greater evil doing something else. So, yeah. I don't think it's compromising on our omnipotence. I think it is choosing a definition of omnipotence based on it being the one that makes the question interesting. Fair. But again, like, me... Yes, but interesting to us is, I just feel like interesting to me is a, a failure of imagination, frankly. The demon has to make it interesting to some idiot like me. Like, that doesn't seem very uh, omnipotent or omnibenevolent or omniscient. It doesn't seem very omniscient is what I say. Ivan says they're just um, mirror imaging traditional theodicies. Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly what's happening here. So it's like Ivan's pointing out that these are the moves that are made by people trying to, uh, you know, apologize for the problem of evil in uh, religion. So, yeah. But like, that's the strategy of the paper. It looks like it's a good strategy. I don't know what they're going to come out with. That's the question. Like, if you're just going to flip the like the uh, value, the valence of the value, like, you're going from, like, uh, good to evil, it looks like, yes, the argument is going to be structurally similar, but what new thing are they going to add then? And we're going to have to see, like, does this author actually add anything? Or are we just, you know, rehearsing the same bullshit? If we're rehearsing the same bullshit, which they claim they're not doing, then, you know, it'll be good. But what what will we learn, actually? Okay. Okay, so, yeah, so... Now, if we substitute uh, premise two prime for the premise two in the original argument, the argument falls apart for the conclusion no longer follows from the premises. Yeah, so if you have a limited uh, thing, a limited ability to create a world with only evil, then yeah, you, it doesn't follow that. It, the uh, uh, that therefore the demon does not exist. Like, so you have a demon, it does make the world as evil as it can be made, and that's fine. Unreal says, perhaps by rehearsing the BS in the mirror world, we are more easily to see it as BS. 
perhaps, but I mean, these are philosophers. This is published in a philosophy journal. Um, this isn't a pop journal. Analysis is not that. So there shouldn't be anyone that was really that confused about it. Um, but yeah, so maybe, but this wouldn't be the, you're right, Unreal, but this wouldn't be the venue to publish such a paper. Or if they did it, it would be just kind of fluff for them, which they do sometimes. They do publish like, you know, silly papers, but like, it's just, that would be a different problem in some sense. We don't know yet. But the author did claim at the beginning that they're going to have a bigger, uh, their conclusion is going to be stronger. Okay, one can affirm without contradiction both the um, existence of an omnipotent, omniscient, and omnimalevolent demon who created the world and the existence of goodness in the world, so long as one also affirms that every good is logically necessary in order for this to be the most evil world the demon could have created. The demoness thus appears to have escaped the force of the problem of goodness. Ivan says, I came up with the same argument independently when arguing with apologists. Cool. Um... Yeah, it will be interesting to see where they go with it. Exactly. Frank says, It is only a mirror world if good and evil are symmetric, but if the fundamental structure of good and evil were, say, a ray instead of a line, then they wouldn't be. Yeah, so this is... That's the thing. What is this person going to claim is the difference? That's all... It, that's what we're waiting to see. Because they haven't done anything interesting yet. Um, so. Okay, so they, here, here we go. But things are not so simple... Maybe we're getting somewhere. And we're getting to the end of the paper because it's a short paper. But things are not so simple. For now, the demonist is faced by yet another argument that challenges his belief. One, assume that there exists an omnipotent, omniscient, omnimalevolent demon who created the world. If the demon exists, then every good in the world is logically necessary in order for this to be the most evil world that the demon could have created. But there is strong reason to believe that, there, that not every good in the world is logically necessary in order for this to be the most evil world the demon could have created. Therefore, there is strong reason to believe that the demon does not exist. Yeah, so if there are any extra goods in the world, then what, the demon obviously is not omniscient and not, or not omnimalevolent or not omnipotent, one of those. Okay, author says, The second argument, unlike the first, does not claim that belief in the demon is illogical. Rather, it claims that such belief is unreasonable. Yeah, there's strong reason, they said right here. There's strong reason to believe that the demon does not exist. Skeletor, I like being evil. Evil demon? Damn, yeah. Let's see, am I still live on kick? I am still live on kick. Hooray, it's working. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just an unreasonability argument. Beautiful mountain ranges, spectacular sunsets, the plays of Shakespeare, and the quartets of Beethoven do not seem in any way to enhance the evils of the world. Acts of altruism, generosity, and kind-heartedness certainly do not appear to increase the world's sinister aspects. Yeah, I am still on the... Uh, uh, the kick. In other words, this argument challenges the demonist to suggest plausible reasons for his view that every go every good in the world makes possible a world containing even greater evils that would poss that would be possible without these goods. Yeah, live and kicking. Yeah, appreciate it because like anything new in streaming is hard. <laughs> like the streamers here now. Speaking of, I should give out some. Uh, let's uh, give out some shout outs. I, I shouted out Ivan before, but we've got Anne in uh, both chats. So everyone who's not following Anne, go follow Anne. She does uh, politics, sociology, and uh, talks politics and so sociology usually, and then plays games and uh, makers and crafting streams also. And uh, do we have anyone else that needs shout outs? I'll remember at some point. But yeah. Okay, so this is the thing. Even if there's some goods, then it would be unreasonable to believe that there is some like master demon that created the world, but it's not impossible anymore. Okay, the reader will, of course, have observed that thus far the discussion of the problem of goodness exactly parallels traditional discussions of the problem of evil. So there we go. So the author knows what they're doing. Traditional discussions of the problem of evil. All the arguments and counterarguments that have been presented are equally applicable mutatis mutandis to either problem. What may be somewhat surprising, however, is that classic arguments in the defense of the view that every evil in the world makes possible a world containing even greater goods can be exactly paralleled by arguments in deference of the view that every good in the world makes possible a world containing even greater evils. To illustrate the point, I shall proceed to construct a cacodemony along the identical lines of the well-known theodicy constructed by John Hick. We begin by dividing all goods into two sorts, moral goods and physical goods. Moral goods are those human beings 
uh, are those human beings do for each other. Physical goods are those to be found in the human environment. The justification of moral goods proceeds by logically tying the existence of such goods to man's free will. Surely, performing a bad act freely is more evil than performing such an act involuntarily. The demon could have ensured that human beings would always perform bad actions, but such actions would not have been free since the demon would have ensured their occurrence. And this is uh, someone in chat, I forgot who brought this up. You need free will to say, okay, free will ensures that the actions are maximally evil because if the demon was doing it, then it would just be the demon doing all the stuff. And since the actions would not have been free, their performance would not have produced the greatest possible evil, since greater evil can be produced by free persons than by unfree ones. The demon thus had to provide human beings with freedom so that they might perform their bad actions voluntarily, thus maximizing evil. As for the justification of physical goods, we should not suppose that the demon's purpose in creating the world was to construct a mere chamber of tortures in which the inhabitants would be forced to endure a succession of unrelieved pains. The world can be viewed instead as a place of soul-breaking in which free human beings, by grappling with the exhausting tasks and challenges of their existence in a common environment, can thereby have their spirits broken and their wills to live destroyed. And yeah, I think Ivan brought this up that like you give people hope and then you dash it. So like this is maybe that is a greater evil, but then what I was saying is you need a uh, ranking of evils of some sort. This conception of the world can be supported by what following Hicks uh, we call the 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 method were the method were so sorry one sec. So, let me restart this. I apologize. The conception of the world can be supported by by what following Hick we may call the method of negative cacodemony. Suppose, contrary to fact, that this world were so arranged that nothing could ever go well. No one could help anyone else. No one could perform a courageous act. No one could complete, complete any worthwhile project. Presumably, such a world could be created through innumerable acts of the demon that would continually alter the laws of nature as necessary. It is evident that our present ethical concepts would be use, uh, useless in such a world for ought implies can, and if no good act could be performed, it would follow that none ought be performed. The whole notion of evil would seem to drop out, for to understand and recognize evils we must have some idea of goods. Consequently, such a world, however efficiently it might promote pains, would be ill-adapted for the development of the worst qualities of the human personality. Okay, yeah, so this is the thing. We are ranking evils, and to get the highest evils, you need free will, and free will implies that there's going to be an error theory in evil. Because people might choose, even among a terrible situation, to do the right thing. Okay, at this point, this cacodemony, just as Hick's theodicy, points forward in two ways to the subject of life after death. First, although there are many striking instances of evil being brought forth from good through a person's reaction to it, witness the pollution of beautiful lakes or slashing of great paintings, still there are many other cases in which the opposite has happened. Therefore, it would seem that any demonic purpose of soul-breaking that is at work in earthly history must continue beyond this life if it is ever to achieve more than a very partial and fragmentary success. Second, if we ask whether the business of soul-breaking is so evil as to nullify all the goodness to be found in human life, the demonist's answer must be in terms of a, fut a future evil great enough to justify all that has happened on the way to it. Yeah, so this is the old... Well, you just don't understand God's plan. You just don't understand the demon's plan to like ruin your life and make you hate everything. And that's why you have good now so that you can fail later. Have we now provided an, an adequate cacodemony? It is, I think, just as strong as Hick's theodicy, but neither in my view is successful. Nor do I see any plausible way of strengthening either one. What reason is there to believe in an afterlife of any particular sort? What evidence is there that the world would be either better without the beauty of a sunset or worse without the horrors of bu bubonic plague? What evidence is there either that the free will of a, so of a Socrates achieved greater evil free will of a Socrates achieved greater evil than would have been achieved by his performing wrong actions involuntarily, or that the free will of a Hitler achieved greater good than would have been achieved by his performing right actions involuntarily. Yeah, so again, this is the this is a, this is hard sentences, but basically, how do you know what the god or the demon's grand plan is? The hypothesis that all the good in the world is a necessary part of this of this worst of all possible worlds is not contradictory. Nevertheless, it is highly unlikely. 
Similarly, the hypothesis that all evil in the world is a necessary part of this best of all possible is not contradictory, but it too is highly unlikely. But if this is neither the worst of all possible worlds nor the best of all possible worlds, yeah, we're in a mediocre fucking world, people. Did you not realize that? Then it could not have been created by either an all-powerful, all-evil demon or an all-powerful, all-good deity. Thus, although the problem of goodness and the problem of evil do not show either demonism or theism to be impossible views, they show them both to be highly improbable. If demonists or theists can produce any other evidence in favor of their positions, they may be able to increase the plausibility of their views, but unless they can produce such evidence, the reasonable conclusion is that neither the demon nor God exists. Isn't this the best of all possible worlds? Well, if you're, li if you're Leibniz. Um, then yes. Um, I'm going to Brian, this world is pretty mid to be honest. Yeah, that's basically where this is going. Okay. So what did this paper actually do here? It, it basically said, look, if you're going to think this is the best of all possible worlds, then all the reasons you have to support this being the best of all possible worlds actually also support the, this being the worst of all possible worlds. But, and Ivan, yeah, this is kind of a yeet, but what they're doing here is they're balancing out the uh, arguments. So they're trying to say it puts us in a 50 50 position because all the things that one uh, side would say, the other side can say equally. So that means it, we're indifferent to having an, uh, God being a demon or God being like, you know, God, God, like the omnipotent and like omnibenevolent thing. So if you, we are then for, therefore in a mid world, that's actually arguing against the ontological argument. So this is an anti-ontological argument. That's what it comes down to, which is mildly interesting. Um, the 50-50 take, well, this is what happened right here. Um, this is, they started to talk probability. That's all that, this is the only thing that was new in the entire paper is that they mentioned, because all possible worlds is not the same as a probability. All possible worlds is just like, well, what, what exists? But when all of a sudden they said, uh, highly improbable right here, this is the only new thing they're adding here. They, they are saying that once you have evened out the number of worlds that could be, then you can't choose between them. And therefore there is no, nothing more that you can say. You are indifferent to the choices. So, yeah. Frank says, if this world is the only world that can exist, then it is simultaneously the best and worst of all possible worlds. Yeah, but no one makes that claim in this area. Everyone is making the claim that there, God could have done otherwise. Um, like, there are other possible worlds, but God wouldn't have done that because they would have made the best possible world. That's Leibniz's argument. But this author is saying, hey, look, maybe if we're equally on the side of the demon, maybe is the worst of all possible worlds that are just out for suffering, then... Basically, what they're doing is they're showing the argument is independent of uh, our f our feelings for God or the d the devil. And so, once it's independent of that, you can't use this as a way of saying, "Hey, look, um, on even though there's evil in the world, the good in the world says that we should believe in God." Well, this is saying the exact opposite. Even though there's good in the world, we shouldn't use that as uh, evidence that there isn't a devil that created us. Okay, Ivan says, I think this is intended to make a mockery of theodicies and it succeeds. Yeah, I think that's exactly right because this is showing that all their arguments, and let's give it a little review. Everyone here, now, this is the thing. Um, I completely agree. This is a parody style argument on theodicies saying, hey, look, your all your arguments can be used to subvert your own conclusions. Now, I tried to point out at the end what the actual mechanism was that uh, is using it because it's saying, look, if all the good in the world is evidence for God, then on all the, um, it, it's not necessarily all the good in the world's evidence for God. It could also be evidence for the devil. And once you do that, then all your evidence could go either way. Then what you will have is a probabilistic argument saying that you, you cannot actually make a decision between them because there is no, um, background knowledge. So, so yeah, Ivan gives me Nog Hammer of Justice. That yeah, like a shot of a hammer there. So we've got two. Thank you for um. Yeah, so, uh, Brian dance. Yes, <laughs> real Brian does the Brian dance. That's exactly correct. Uh, Brian is dancing. Um, yeah. So there we go. So yeah. So this was 
Anyone who doesn't know is new here is on uh, Kick. If you're on Kick and you're not Infernal, then here's what we do. We review the papers. This will go up on a website. And you, you get to use the uh, Better TTV emotes that are on the screen right here. Brain dance. You could also use the global yay or nays. So um, if you're on Kick and you're watching, I will copy your stuff into the... Uh, the uh, I'll manually copy it over. So... We've got brain dance for fun ideas for big claims that shriveled up. This got dangerously close to a paper that had no no point. This was almost a, a nog grapes paper, but in the end, it had a good enough point. It it did a little bit of parody. It's like okay, but what was the point? They actually got it right. This is what I was claiming right at the end. It made sense in terms of you're thinking as good or evil as evidence for God or the devil, showing that all the evidence can be flip flopped shows that you don't you have to uh, apply the principle of indifference and then you can't use the evidence either way and so that cuts all evidence for god or the devil out of it so uh it was only for academics now this was a uh, you know for a lot of people who are interested in you know religious claims or abhors deep ancient ideas um this could be thought of as that because this is an old idea but like the way they argued for this was not this was an analytic paper they did they took someone's arguments and flopped them that's what they did so let's see what am i gonna say i'll say a vote yay that was fun this is a vote yay um was this a brain dance was this really a fun idea yeah that's all this was really this was really just a brain dance paper um it just had a cutesy idea and they pulled it off uh, and I'm actually going to give, no, this is not really all that analytic. So this is a simple paper, pretty good. If anyone else wants to get their uh, review in, let me know, like uh, get it in now. That's all. That's all I'm saying. So let's see. Anyone over on kick, uh, want to do participate, feel free. Um, Frank says, I think the paper really, really needed my summary at the end. Yeah, this was, um, more style than substance on this paper and, explaining exactly what happened in the last moment is um like they didn't they didn't actually make that very clear this last claim of probability that i was uh pointing out this is the only new thing that happened here um and i don't even know if they understood exactly the argument that they were making but this is what happened in there okay so we got an ooh so ann is doing it from over there. I will copy that over and thank you for the uh, review there. Since MX says a little uh, navel gazing, that's fair. Um, even though this would not be only for philosophers, it would be for basically theologians who are also academics. So I think that's fair. Um, yeah. So, let me just write that down. And, and knife. Yeah, and knife is fair too, because it was just a technical argument. But okay, that's it for now. If uh, for this paper.